Hey guys, it's TFNot. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another action figure review. This is going to be of the brand new Bandai Tomashi Nations SH Figure Arts Jujutsu Kaisen Sukuna figure. Very excited to finally have another Jujutsu Kaisen SH Figure Arts figure here. Subaru Ghetto comes out next month, I believe. And I'm glad to finally have an actual Sukuna figure. I do wish it was a more unique look, like the version in the robes that we see him in sometimes. I understand they're trying to get a little bit more out of some of these molds, but this here is basically just half this is just the previous UG we got. But this look here is from one of the more iconic fights from the series between him and Fushiguro, so I kind of understand it. But hey, either way, more Jujutsu Kaisen figures, like I said, is always a good thing, at least for me. I love the series. So this is the thinner style boxes with the season one figures that we have here. As you can see, it says Bandai Namco towards the top there. You see the figure in the box, some of the accessories there too. It says SH Figure Arts as well as Sukuna. Some images on the side there. There's a quick read up of the SH Figure Arts line right there. And there's another image right there of Sukuna, the quality sticker for Tomashi Nations as well as the Tomashi Nations logo and the Jujutsu Kaisen logo as well as the Bandai logo towards the bottom right there. On this side here, if we just take a quick look there, you can see on the sides just some images from the original promotional images in these square boxes, right? Uh, that's redundant. Uh, just the images right there. It says Sukuna NSH Figure Arts, and it's just red at the bottom there. On this side, it's just one of those continued images of him being posed right there, SH Figure Arts and Sukuna. On the top here, we zoom in a little bit if I focus, there's another image that was on the front of the box there. Of Sukuna, it does say the character's name in SH Figure Arts. On the bottom here, a different pose of you can see more of the back of the character, Sukuna and Jujutsu Kaisen. So we took we, uh, look towards the back here, the top half, you can see a bunch of different images there and some of the accessories. Even an accessory, as you can see, that comes with Yuji, even though we still don't have a smiling face, even though you should. Uh, you can see at the bottom there, it does have ages 15 and up, as well as the Toho animation logo and a barcode in case you need it. Let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging. Here's the figure out of the packaging and I actually really like this figure a lot. Not that I thought I wasn't going to, but because of the reuse, I thought it was just going to be a little bit subpar compared to these new releases, but this is a really solid piece here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories, then we'll take a closer look at the figure. Here's a quick look at all the accessories you get with Sukuna. I wish we got a little bit of extra stuff, maybe one extra face or maybe some extra hands, but what we do have here is pretty nice. Interestingly enough, we do have a physical instruction manual here, whereas some of the newest releases in the Bandai Tomash Station stuff are doing paperless. So it's cool that we do have this uh, actual paper physical instruction manual just going off some of the alternate pieces and potential paint rub in some areas. There's also a PDF online of this particular uh, instruction manual. I do want to quickly show off some head swaps. The head sculpt from the previous UG figure can fit on the Sukuna body and vice versa, which is really cool that that actually works. They're not entirely made for each other, but you can make these work almost perfectly. There are some slight iffiness when it comes to swapping the faces. As you see here, I have the original heads on both bodies and I do have some different faces. So the new body that right now is sporting the original UG uh, Sukuna head sculpt and I have one of the new face plates on the UG head sculpt there. As you can see, they do look pretty good on there, but once you look pretty close, you can see some uh, iffy stuff going on. So that previous Sukuna face, as you can see, there's a little bit of gapage towards the foreheads, just the way that that actual face sculpt is sculpted. It's a little off. It's, you know, you can make it work in some toy photography, but it's gonna look a little distracting if you look close enough. Very similar to the Yuji head sculpt. Because of how these new Sukuna face plates are sculpted, the hair lines don't entirely connect there. So that is something to mention right there that you can make these work, but they're not going to be 100% perfect, unfortunately. Speaking of these actual face sculpts, we're going to go ahead and talk about the actual face plates with Sukuna. This one is like a menacing, like wide eye expression with the gritting teeth. All these faces have really great markings with the paint there looking really good they are slightly different you have to look close enough this is more indented on that uh that previous face but you can see that they are slightly different in terms of the actual markings and then these are more angular like side eyes there compared to the new one but the actual face 
printing and the paint on there. All that looks great with the detail in the teeth too. The actual sculpting and then the sideburns have some nice sculpting as well. All that paint looks really clean. This is probably my favorite face out of this release. The really crazy gritting teeth expression here. You can see that the individual teeth are a little bit more prominent in the paint and sculpt work there. That looks great. The scrunching around the eyebrows. Again, the face paint. Not really paint, the markings I should say. All that is really fantastic. Last but not least for the Sukuna stuff, we have this more bored speaking expression. As you can see there, when you know, sometimes he will get bored with uh, just how boring some of his uh, opponents are. So that's kind of amusing that we have this face here. I do wish we had a more angrier face sculpt for uh, fighting poses. Uh, we don't really have anything like that, but it's still cool we get a lot of faces for Sukuna. Uh, and then we have this Yuji face sculpt here with the uh, mouth talking on the side there. I don't think that this looks as good as it did in the original promotional images. And I know that this is a much larger area to sculpt with, but the hand or the mouth on the hand from the previous Yuji just looks better than what we have here. We'll look a little closer. I just don't. Uh, it's not god awful or anything. It looks like a mouth. It's just I think it could be a little bit better. But the actual Yuji, uh, Yuji faceplate is pretty nice too. I just wish. I mean, I just want a smile one. I know he doesn't really smile much anymore in the manga, but I wish we had a smile one. Looking down towards the. Uh, bottom left there looking pretty cool and then i pop that face plate onto the yuji body so you see how that looks okay going through these hands pretty quickly i wish we had maybe i don't know what other hands that could have been included but maybe just like one extra pair of different posing hands this is for his uh malevolent shrine i believe so that's really cool i thought this was actually one sculpt but uh i don't mind it's not one sculpt but in the original promotional images it kind of looked like that to me but you know you can bring these together and when you pose it around the fingernails are crazy long. The way that the uh, the black paint is on there is really nice too. There's a, like a little bit of shading in between the fingers, just ever so slightly, I believe, or maybe that's just camera tricks. But uh, that looks really nice. The inside of the palm there also looking really great. Sculpting is really nice. And then we do have fists here. Uh, these also have really long fingernails. There's specs on my finger, that's weird. Uh, these. These fingers look great with the nails. And it looks like a little bit of black paint going on to the thumb. You can definitely tell that's not supposed to be on there, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, other than that, let's see. The actual creasing around the uh, index finger and the thumb looks really great. And then the knuckles, all that looks pretty good too. And then last but not last, I already talked about that hand. Last but not least, we have this right here i wonder if i can get that speck off that thumb and whatever's going on with these palms it's not super noticeable but when you look close enough yeah it's not great um but this is more meant for touching his chin like he does in some uh panels and sometimes in the anime uh this is a really nice hand right here but again that paint could be better so one thing i want to do really quick is show off you know not only the parts that he can package with like this face and those hands but how this head sculpt looks compared to the previous yuji like the overall head sculpt because when sukuna takes form you know it takes over yuji hair gets parted back and these are definitely different sculpts as you can see the one uh, on the right the hair is parting a little bit more like on to each side to like left or right whereas it's a way more swept back for the previous one one thing to mention is there are some flatter areas, not like super duper flat, but areas like this are a little bit flatter with some of these spikes, as well as the top of the hair uh, right there, a little bit of a flat area. Everything is pretty spiked with the Sukuna figure, you know, the new one on the right. Other than that, the, uh, the way that the hair is molded, that plastic, the color of it, it's pretty accurate. I think I'm starting to get a little bit of paint wear and tear, unfortunately, on my... That could be lint. Uh, I'll have to check that out later. But uh, yeah, that hair might not be doing well. But that's something I wanted to show you. I think the bat uh, where, you know, it's like darker parts of his hair. I think that paint is actually accurate. It might be a tiny bit brighter on the new Sukuna figure here. I believe the, the I don't want to really try it right now, but I believe those hair, uh, hair pieces are also, they probably would work with each other. It'd just take me too long to do all that for you right now. This is a really nice looking 
faceplate that we get packaged with this figure. It's this more spi uh, smiling expression. This is why I wanted angrier expressions, unfortunately, is just because we have a lot of smiles. Now, he does do that a lot because this man's an absolute menace. But uh, this is still a really nice looking faceplate here. The eyes are really nice. The markings, the way that the uh, color of the mouth is done, all that is great. Again, I mentioned that this is molded in this plastic yeah, for some reason. Maybe some shading would have helped, but I think it looks pretty good as is. The markings on the neck as well, all of that is really clean. I think there's a little bit of skin tone coming through the markings, but it's not very noticeable. You have all these uh, markings on the back here. Again, a little bit of skin tone coming through, uh, but again, you have to look really close. One thing I want to mention, I can't tell exactly what kinds of plaster is, but the, um, the, I believe the shoulder piece is pretty hard plastic. And then this isn't the super, you know, the, it's not super soft, but the chest is a little bit of a softer plastic. I can push in just a little bit, I believe. I'm not entirely sure exactly what all kinds of plastics is being used here, but some parts are a little bit more hollow, whereas some is a little bit softer. Just what I, something I wanted to mention. I don't think that these pieces here, though, if I have them, here he is, I don't think they're as soft as the Utah figure. These are pretty soft pieces. Just something, it's not really a complaint, just something I want to mention that these, it's similar to how Utah's butterfly joints are covered, but they're not as soft. But they still have a really great range of motion. But this is the area the most where you'll probably get the most paint wearing, unfortunately. So just be careful. Essentially, we have a ball joint going into the rib, so you can maneuver that to be pushed back a little bit, move it like that so that doesn't rub up against there, and then you do it the opposite way if you don't want to mess up the back markings. Uh, because of the way the articulation is done and you see some of that paint, you can match it up to fit, but there will be times where when you move it around, the, the uh, markings, all that is going to be inconsistent. It's kind of like what happens with some Marvel Legends figures mostly spider-man figures same thing with the uh stomach tats is what i'm going to call them also this man is jacked look at all the detail in the muscles and ribs pecs abs all that but you can see that even with this being pushed back all the way either one side's gonna fit with that and not the other or vice for actually a little bit i think you can make it work either way yeah actually that works so but that's something you'll, you'll want to, you know, look at, you know, this will break out when you move it around, unfortunately. But other import figures sometimes will have that too, if they have paint on the stomach. Whatever the, this pattern is for the circle, and then this dot, large dot right there, it's going to be reflected on the other side. That's really nice, really painted nicely. Skin tones match pretty well too, uh, depending on different plastics, I think, whatever's being used here. Everything, at least through my viewfinder and in person, all that looks pretty consistent. We have these uh, arm markings, which are actually sculpted in here. And that's done really well. The muscu uh, musculature of the arms is really nice. Uh, I'm trying to, yeah, I, I can feel a groove in my index finger where the skin tone meets the black there. All that looks pretty good too. I think the sculpting somehow breaks up just a little bit for some reason, but you gotta look pretty close for that. Well, any imperfections so far, you really gotta look close to see them. Except for some of those accessories, I think had a little bit of paint splotching. I think there's a tiny bit underneath the fingernail that looks a little unnatural, but I could be wrong. I can't really tell right now, so I'm not going to knock the figure too much for it. These are the claw hands. You can see very similar to the previous hands we had. The uh, Those black fingernails are really nice. A little bit of sculpting in the palms there. And then I, there's actually a belly button in there too. Did they sculpt nipples? <laughs> no, nah, they didn't. Uh, but back muscles, that all looks really great too. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, they're following a particular mold. There's not, it's not like super crazy details, but the actual, you know, unique musculature is done really well. I can see people taking this top torso and kit bashing it for other characters. You would have to sand some parts down because of how it's actually sculpted and then remove some of the paint, but and you could probably make some of it work. Last but not least, if I can speak, what is new with this figure compared to the previous UG is the crotch piece. We have a belt and a silver uh, buckle right there, and it's mostly just black paint for the belt. 
And we have a little bit of wrinkles and some seam lines for how the pants are supposed to look and a little bit of a zipper there too. So I mentioned that it was a little bit hard for me to find out, but there is no actual belt sculpted on the previous UG. And the way, and it's kind of weird to look at the crotch pieces, but the way that some of these wrinkles are done, they're similar, but not the exact same around the crotch there. Other than that, and I reviewed this about two years ago, uh, the everything involving the legs, like the hips, the thighs and knees and all that are the exact same. I try to see if there's any difference, but the way that some of these uh, creases and grooves are sculpted or the exact for Sukuna at least are the exact same on Yuji from two years ago. We knew it was going to be like that, but it's something just to mention if you wanted something completely new. I think the way that they molded some of the plastic, this looks a little bit more of like a matte. I don't actually don't know. It's pretty much almost the exact same color. This might be a little bit more faded compared to this. The knees are the exact same. The cuffs of the pants are the exact same with those wrinkles. The shoes are also the exact same. Uh, I think the laces on the new one is a little bit more of a matte finish and it looks a tiny bit glossier somehow, I guess, depending on the light and the previous one. Uh, I think the brown is a slightly brighter one too. Uh, it's it's really hard to notice, but yeah, this is about the same when it comes to the legs. You, I mean, I'll show you real quick, you know, all the, uh, you know, the wrinkles going on there, but they, they reuse the legs and that it's not necessarily a bad thing. I just wish again, this is more of the robes version. Maybe we'll get that in the future, but I know it would require a lot of unique sculpting, but I'm sure some people can maybe kit passion parts from other SH figure arts figures. And then, you know, just put some soft goods on this and that could maybe work soft goods that cover the legs too. It's not a bad thing because you know, these legs were always a pretty good sculpt, but, uh, it's just something I did want to mention. If you're expecting anything new with these legs, unfortunately, not so much. Articulation is a dumbbell joint in the head here, as well as going into the torso. So it allows for all this different range of motion, side to side, perfect swiveling, even grab the neck a little bit. The back motion is, it could be a little bit better, but it's actually pretty good. The forward motion is also pretty nice, there's that tilt. And then I already mentioned this, but there is the butterfly joints that are a little bit hard to grab. There's a lot of sockets going on in here, but you can actually move around really well in and out as well. And then there's a really nice groove for the actual arm and it goes all the way out like that. That's impressive. Arms can go all the way around here, upper arm swivel, double jointed elbow. I don't think there's any more swiveling that should be there. Standard wrist articulation for an SH figure arts figure, as you can see here, ball jointed waist up here. And then we have a separate ball joint at the actual, uh, as well, the ribs and then the waist. So combined, that's as far back as it wants to go, which is actually really good. The forward could be a little bit better, but still rather nice and swiveling all that and tilting. No problem. Legs go forward that much. This butt sculpt gets in the way of going back. Doesn't do a perfect split, but that was like the previous UG. There's no sculpting in there. There's something I just wanted to mention. Not really a big deal to me. Upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, as you can see right there. We have a swivel at this part of the ankle, up and down here, which could be actually it's pretty good down. Up is also really, really nice. And then toe hinge. And one last thing I want to mention is that they have done away with some of these figures with the metal pins right there. Uh, whereas, you know, UG originally had metal pins for the wrists, not a big complaint, just something I wanted to mention. I also never noticed that Utah also has plastic wrists, so all that fits together really well, so you don't just see a weird metal piece for the wrists now. So here's every SH Figure Arts Juju Kaisen figure right here. It's a little bit hard to see all these figures with this wide shot here. This is going to be a little bit hard to attempt when Ghetto comes, I believe, at the end of May. But as you can see with the ruler here, it's about 15 and a half centimeters. That's going to put this just under or right at six inches at the top of the hair. Sukuna in the middle might be a tiny bit shorter than Yuji since we have a new torso sculpt that might end up being a little bit shorter. But they're pretty close in scale with each other right next to Sukuna on the left. That is uh, Yuta, as you can see, is a little bit taller. Both figures of Gojo, they're the same height. So as you can see, they're a little bit taller than Sukuna. Far left, no bars, definitely gonna be shorter. Far right, 
Hushiguro is going to be just a little bit taller. His hair is pretty spiky, so that kind of helps with the height. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this figure. Not that I thought it was going to be bad, of course, but I might actually like it a little bit more than the new Trunks. I know that's a little bit sacrilege for some Dragon Ball fans to probably hear, but this is a really nice figure. I do wish they gave us Sukuna in his robes, but the way they did this is still really nice. The new upper torso, all of that is sculpted really well. All of the paint markings are really great and the sculpted areas for the markings are really good too. We also have a lot of really good hands and face plates. The new hair sculpt is also really well done. I do wish we had an angrier face plate for different action poses. That would have been nice. And again, I do wish we had a smiling face for Eugene this time, but I don't think we're ever going to get one at this point. And I'm in cope mode. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we knew that the legs were going to be reused, but it was never going to be bad reuse, at least if you ask me. Those legs were already, are uh, always pretty good. So this is a really nice figure with great range of motion and articulation. It's just a fun figure, man. Really great. It is pretty pricey. It's like 67 almost 70 bucks, depending on when you're going to get it. And uh, I got mine from AmiAmi. Don't know if there's any more in stock there, but uh, it should be out in the U.S. retailers pretty soon as well. Maybe the next two months. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think of the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share amongst your friends, follow me on Instagram for more content over there, and I'll see you guys later.